is going on everybody? My name is Payne and welcome back to another anime review video and as expected here is the third and as of the making of this video final movie in the rebuild of Evangelion movie series directed by Hideaki Anno and made by Studio Kara and let's get right into the third movie here is Evangelion 3.0 you cannot redo. Ava 3.0 was directed by Hideaki Anno, Kazuya Sudomaki, and Mihiro Maeda, who helped out on the Neon Genesis TV series, as well as helping out uh, animation-wise in the first two movies, as well as helping out with studios such as Studio Gonzo, and early in his career, Studio Ghibli. It came out on November 17th, 2012, and it's 106 minutes long. The movie was originally going to be released alongside the final Ava movie when the movies were announced in late 2006 uh, with a possible summer 2008 release before it was announced in March of 2012 that Ava 3.0 was going to be released in November of that year and that the final movie was going to have a later release date which we eventually now know as 2020. So the movie begins in space, because why not, as Asuka Langley Shikinami in Ava Unit 2 and Mari Makinami Illustrious in Ava Unit 8 recover a container that contains Ava Unit 1, who has been sealed in that container since the end of Ava 2.0. After retrieving it, they are ambushed by a series of attack drones known as uh, Evangelion Mark IVs or the Nemesis series, to which Unit 1 awakens from the container, destroys the attack drones or a nemesis series or Ava Mark IVs and then proceeds to go back into the container to where Asuka brings them down to earth. Shinji is then salvaged from within Unit 1's core and restored to physical form by a group led by Colonel Masato Katsuragi known as Will who, with the goal of defeating Nerve and destroying every Evangelion. He is then given a physical exam by a girl named Sakura Suzuhara, who is later revealed to be the younger sister of Toji Suzuhara, the former classmate of Shinji and the sister that was basically injured in the first angel battle in Ava 1.0. That is when he discovers that Unit 1 is no longer able to be piloted as it is being refitted to act as a power source for Will's flying base known as Triple A Wonder and that the other previous occupant in Ava Unit 1's core, Rei Ayanami, was never found. During a later exam, Shinji notices the collar that he is wearing on his neck while asking where Rei is, and Ritsuko Akagi, who is Masato's, you could say right-hand man, explains that not only can he no longer pilot in Ava, but in the event that he triggers an Evangelion's awakening again, specifically Ava Unit 1, a bomb in the collar, known as the DSS Choker, will detonate to stop him and subsequently kill him. And Asuka, who shows up in 3.0 wearing an eye patch, which in my opinion is absolutely badass, uh, tells Shinji that 14 years have passed while he was trapped in Ava Unit 1, and that none of the main characters have aged due to the curse of Ava, which is supposedly uh, stemmed out from the third impact. After that brief confrontation with Asuka, Evangelion Mark 9, which was piloted by Rei, breaks into the AAA Wonder and asks Shinji to come with her. Masato begs him to stop and revealed, reveals the existence of Will and why was it made to take out Nerve and destroy all the Evangelions, but Shinji, who was overwhelmed and feeling betrayed at that point, just like every other freaking movie and episode, leaves with Rei. Rei leads Shinji through the ruins of the Geofront into Terminal Dogma in a complete completely new black plug suit, which I just think is, uh, whoa, whew, uh, way better. Holy shit. That, that looks really fucking good. And Gendo, who now wears a visor over his eyes instead of his trademark glasses, openly welcomes his son and still plans to enact the human instrumentality project despite Sele's silence and tells Shinji that he is there to pilot the new Evangelion known as Ava Unit 13, alongside Kaoru Nagasa, aka Gay Space Jesus. And while exploring Central Dogma, Shinji finds that Rei has no memory of Shinji, very little understanding of the world around her, and only does what she has ordered, and he concludes that she is not his Rei. Now, just to go off script here, the point, uh, at this point in the movie, I, I, just like everyone else, knew what was going to happen. So it, it was basically just a waiting game of, you know, how, how was Shinji going to find out that Rei was just a clone of, of his mom? 
But while we were waiting for that, Shinji realizes that his his tape player that he has had ever since the beginning of the series is broken and sits in his room alone uh, until Kaoru takes him to play a piano duet during which the two bond over that. Uh, the following day, he takes Shinji to the ruins of Tokyo 3 where the moon and Earth's surface are both covered with red crosses and the terrain is overrun by red crystals that are shaped like Evangelions. Kairu then tells Shinji that his actions in Awakening Unit 1 caused not the third impact, but the near third impact, which killed everyone in Tokyo 3 and ruined the world further. Kairu then explains the nature of the Human Instrumentality Project to Shinji's horror by saying that by killing all life on Earth, new life that bears the fruit of life can be created. And meanwhile, Rei rests in a tank of LCL, God, I haven't really said that in a while, uh, where she sees the same version of Rei that Shinji saw when he first came to Tokyo 3 in 1.0. Shortly afterwards, Kozo Fuyatsuki, somehow still Gendo's right-hand man, invites Shinji to play a game of Shogi with him, which he uses as a pretext to discuss his mother, Yui Akari, uh, first mentioning to him that her maiden name was Yui Ayanami. He then shows him a picture of Yui holding Shinji, causing him to note his mother's resemblance to Rei, and Fuyutsuki reveals that she is not dead, unlike in the TV series when Shinji finds out alongside Masato that Rei was just a clone of Shinji's mom after an angel attack, but instead that she is in fact sealed inside Unit 1's core as the control system, and that Gendo attempted to clone Yui, which ended up creating Rei, and that the new Rei, the Rei in the black plug suit, is just another clone in the Ayanami series. This revelation drives Shinji to his one millionth mental breakdown, which in the show is seen as an acid trip until Kaoru intervenes by taking off his collar from his neck and puts it on himself and explains what Gendo's plan is, which was that the two must pilot Ava Unit 13 into Terminal Dogma and see uh, and use the two spears within, the Spear of, of Cassius and the Spear of Longinus, to cause the fourth impact. Kaoru, however, thinks that the two can use the spears to undo the damage that Shinji has done to the world and wishes to betray Gendo and Sele out of love for Shinji. And Shinji would eventually agree. And for anyone who was a little little iffy about why I call Kaoru gay space Jesus, well, this is basically why. And I, I, for anyone who's seen the show or my review of the show, you should probably know why by this point. So the two then proceed to enter the double cockpit Ava Unit 13 and descend into Terminal Dogma with Rey following along in Ava Mark 9. Aboard the AAA Wonder, Masato notes the activation of Ava Unit 13 and dispatches both Asuka and Mari. Shinji and Kaoru going down Terminal Dogma then reach Lilith's decaying headless corpse where the Spear of Cassius and the Spear of Longinus rest and the abandoned e Evangelion Mark VI, which is what Kaoru was in at the end of 2.0. Kaoru then believed that something is wrong, but Shinji is distracted by Asuka and Mari's uh, entry into Terminal Dogma. Kaoru insists that they stop, which, which pisses off Shinji, and his rage causes Ava 13 to awaken, and Kaoru uh, finds out that his controls are shut off as he realizes that the Spear of Cassius is actually a second Spear of Longinus, and he and Asuka both beg Shinji not to pull the spears, but he ignores both of them. And on Gendo's orders, Ava Mark 9 decapitates Ava Unit Mark 6, just Ava Mark 6, to release to 12th Angel, which is absorbed by Ava Unit 13. And when the spears are released, Ava Unit 13 fully awakens, becoming a giant light with two halos, therefore beginning the fourth impact. Gendo then begins deactivating the Sele monoliths in preparation for the fourth impact and discusses the fact that Sele are not exactly human as they wish them luck and show approval of his plans. Uh, meanwhile, Ava 13 rises up into the sky and Kaoru, Kaoru reveals himself as the first angel, casting himself down uh, to the 13th angel in an attempt to reverse the fourth impact, but the choker senses Kaoru's power and starts to turn on. Meanwhile, Ava Mark 9 becomes what is known as Adam's Vessel and tries to retake the AAA wonder for Sele while Rey sits helpless in the entry plug ejected from Ava Mark 9. Asuka would later manage to destroy Mark 9 by blowing up her own unit, Ava Unit 2, and releasing the entry plug. Kaoru would eventually sacrifice his life to halt the fourth impact. Mari releases Shinji's entry plug, and Ava 13 drops to the ground, basically destroyed. Masato and Gendo both eventually retreat, 
and fast forward to an unspecified amount of time later where the movie ends with Asuka finding Shinji's entry plug and drags him through a red desert with Rei following along. So after watching this movie, I easily came out of this with one simple conclusion. And that is this movie is just a huge cop-out. Evangelion 3.0 basically answered no questions. I am in no way exaggerating when I say that the movie was better at taking away things that we previously knew rather than clarifying anything for us in the Rebuild series. Uh, this is itself not a bad aspect of the movie as it can be attributed to two things. One, Studio Kara wants us to ask a lot of questions and get curious so that we'll buy 4.0. Or two, Hideaki Yano is trying to be clever and allow the viewers to emulate Shinji's confusion after 14 years in a coma by giving the viewers that same confusion. If you ask me, the second option seems much more likely as in such a case I would say that it was executed pretty well. Uh, Shinji absolutely had no idea what in the world was going on during the entire movie and I can reciprocate that feeling. If I had to make a list of everything that was left unanswered or simply pulled out of Kara's ass, it would be the following questions. The first one I have is why did there have to be a 14 year time skip? Uh, the teaser at the end of 2.0 didn't apply a time skip in any way and I don't think there was even a need for such a long one. I expected the story to pick up immediately after Kaoru speared Shinji and it could have easily done so with much less clumsy exposition. The second question I have is why was everyone a dick to Shinji when at the end of 2.0 it seemed like everyone was fine with him going all out. It was also clear at the end of 2.0 that Shinji didn't cause enough damage to obliterate the Geo front as shown in, in 3.0 as Kaoru stopped them beforehand and everyone had evacuated with shelter of some sort. Uh, and, the, and the desolate wastelands and the weird spinning moons and chalices were never explained and were most certainly not Shinji's fault as the teaser at the end of 2.0 showed a clear sky and a calm geo front shortly after Shinji gets speared. The third question I have is that why did Will, the group that Masato is leading, need to break from Nerf? Uh, it wasn't Nerf's fault that Shinji's supposed third impact happened, and it's not like anyone knew of Gendo's human instrumentality project anyway, which I assume was already on the way because Kaoru seemed prepared enough. There doesn't seem to have been a need for Masato to have broken from Nerve, and Nerve wasn't doing anything wrong. Uh, it feels like the existence of Will in 3.0 is just there to give a conflict without any real depth. The fourth question I have is, what was the significance exactly of having the two spears be Longinus types? I, I, I never really got that. How does that even happen? And the final question, the fifth question is, uh, was there any reason to have Unit 6 contain the 12th Angel? Uh, I thought Kaoru was pretty comfortable using Unit 6, and I'm not sure why the 12th Angel would even be needed to start instrumentality. Also, how exactly did Kaoru fall from the 1st Angel to the 12th Angel, and why did that make such a difference? Hell, I'll go as far as to say that that entire scene at the bottom of the geo front was just pulled out of Kara's ass, as it literally had no context and no explanation for anything. It, the movie even basically just told you, hey, Lilith is dead for some reason. Just go with it. We're not going to explain it for you. Those are just five that I named off at the top of my head, but I'm sure there's plenty of other plot holes and unexpected things that I'm missing. To give him the benefit of the doubt, 3.0 definitely had the well-choreographed fight scenes and beautiful animation to surpass its predecessors in spectacle, but it was just that. A spectacle. Uh, every significant plot device, such as Will and AAA Wonder, the two Lance of Longinuses, Adam's Vessel, just appeared out of thin air and was force-fed into our minds at a lightning-fast rate. Of course, I didn't go into anything in the Evangelion franchise expecting any answers. In fact, answers are the opposite of what I usually expect from anything Evangelion. Uh, however, there is a difference between using unanswered questions in context with previously known facts to generate suspense and curiosity and just taking a bunch of haphazard ideas, animating them, throwing them in no particular order or significance into a movie that was three years in the making. In fact, none of these things would have even have affected me if it weren't for my biggest pet peeve when it came to 3.0. And that was the way Ray was t treated. Okay, sure, I can buy that the original Ray wasn't salvaged from Unit 1. But don't try to play off this new Rey clone as being developed in some way and expect us to care about her or feel anything when she makes the supposedly miraculous decision and decides to eject from Ava Mark 9. 
know Hideaki Anno. We spent two movies getting to know the first Rey and seeing her develop from the stoic, white-haired, nonchalant frick wall to a character that actually warm up and make Shinji happy. It's perfectly fine if she gets killed off for shock factor and for another burden on Shinji's conscience, but that in no way works if you simply introduce another stoic, white-haired, nonchalant brick wall and try to develop her in that same way. Maybe I had too many expectations of the movie. Maybe I shouldn't have gotten in 3.0 with security in my thoughts. Maybe I'm simply not watching it properly, or maybe I missed everything important in the movie. I mean, what more can there be? I mean, we already know that all the imagery and symbolism is just there to look flashy at this point. But even if I had a complete and 100% understanding of everything that it could have led up to and been in the movie, 3.0 still had a very lazy and bullshit execution of a plot. Sure, anyone could go ahead and tell me that I'm meant to be confused all I want, but a line must be drawn between confusing your viewers intentionally and failing to make a cohesive and coherent storyline. And with that, I'm going to be giving Ava 3.0, you cannot redo, a 6 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching my Ava 3.0 review, and thank you guys for watching the Rebuild of Ava movie project that I've been making. Uh, if you like this video or any of the videos I've made regarding Ava, you can hit the like button down below. Uh, and also on the other videos. If you want to see more anime review videos in the near future uh, regarding of its movies or other shows, uh, you can hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down below. Or if there's any anime review videos that you want to see that I've made in the past, there's, there's going to be a few on the screen, a few in the description, and the rest will be in my channel. And with that, my name is Payne, and I'll see you in the next video.